This is Battle of the Barbecues. Camping edition. On the left side, we have our longtime veteran, the Coleman NXT 200 grill, propane grill. And on the right side, we have our Traeger tailgater. We'll be comparing it with different recipes. Some recipes that are better done on the Traeger and some on the Coleman NXT 200. We'll be trying this with three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And at the end, we'll look at the pros and cons of both devices. We'll get back to you. I'm making vegetable quesadilla for myself. I will grill my vegetables now on the Coleman barbecue. I seasoned them on one side, I still need to season them on the other side. I have to tell you with this barbecue, you need to put whatever you're grilling in the center where there are no holes. Because if you do, we have a tendency to put things on the side there. The cooking will, will be uneven from what we experience with this. It's better to put the food in the middle so it cooks more evenly and that's what we want. Have you ever seen this? This is radicchio. This is half of one. It's a lettuce. Us Italians, we love to eat that. It's a little bit bitter, but it's so good. And in case you didn't know, you can grill lettuce. You can put lettuce on your grill. Oh, yes. And it tastes amazing. It becomes sweeter once, once it's cooked. And on a burger or in a quesadilla, so good. Half an onion. Easy. Behave. There you go. And a little bit of bell pepper. I'll season the other side real quick. I have no idea how long I'll leave them there. I just want some grill marks. <laughs> okay, Mr. Onion. Ooh, hello. It smells good. Here are my beautiful vegetables, grilled to perfection. Well, as best I can with the <laughs> Coleman barbecue. On to my, the, the building of my quesadilla. I went overboard with the filling here. <laughs> I'll just try to keep it clean. So remember on the middle part, that I mean the, um, the center of this barbecue is best for cooking. Otherwise it will be uneven. I'm sorry, veggies, maybe you'll fall. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. This quesadilla is done. Plate, paper plate, plate. Woohoo! Look, he can talk to you. Hello, hello. <laughs> looks good. Doesn't matter how it, how it looks, actually. Tastes, taste matters. Mm -mm -mm. Vegetarian. Mmm. Bon appétit. All right. So now we're gonna start the Traeger. So first step with starting the Traeger, you gotta put it in and smoke. Light it up. Light it up. And you wait for it to do to do some nice smoke. Once it's done, once it's smoking, you just need to. Um, Bring it to 350. I'm gonna be doing some very nice and delicious filet mignon. mignon. So now let's put it in three at 350 and close it down. Okay, right now the temperature, my target temperature was 350 and usually the Traeger goes way above the temperature and then when you start seeing smoke here that means that it's cooling down to, to go to that target, target temperature that, uh, that we want. So while it's in the upswing, I usually open it up, it's going to cool it down anyways. It's really nice because it's a com it's like a convection oven. You can cook all kinds of stuff with that. And being a convection oven, 
it's indirect heat, so it's not going to burn the outer, the uh, the outside of your meat. It's going to cook it, cook it well, and it uh, really in depth. Uh, so it keeps its juice. Okay, time to take these babies out. Mm -mm. So we got the trigger running right now. We're gonna start a batch of cookies. Yeah. Yep, that's Why the not? advantage of bringing a trigger in camping is because this acts like a regular oven. So, cookie, cookie batter. So why not try and bake cookies on a campsite? Why not? Oh, little ant. Go away, go away. By the way, the cookies we're making are these cookies. They're uh, gluten-free, uh, organic, as it says. It's from uh, Cuisine L'Angelique. And I'm making the banana chocolate chip version. I don't usually put batter in a Ziploc bag. We just thought it would be easier. Are you doing a poop emojis here? Kind of, huh? Yeah. It's not intentional. <laughs> I'll call them my poopy cookies. Ugly. <laughs> Ugly <laughs> cookies, but they'll be tasty. Ready with our poopy shaped cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Banana, chocolate chips. Don't get any funny ideas. So the <laughs> oven is, <laughs> you twisted, twisted minds. Yo, this is preheated. Three, okay, it's, oh, four it's jumping. 15. Oh, it's supposed to be 350 for about uh, 13 minutes or something like that. Since it's new, we're doing this in the Traeger, we'll just check on them, see how it goes. But in a traditional oven, it's 350 for about 12 to 13 minutes, I think, depending on your oven, of course. Still recording. Yeah. Excuse my French. It is actual French. <laughs> the gloves. All right, cookies are ready. It took a little longer than a regular oven because we didn't really know what we were doing with this one. So about 20 minutes. But and we switched it to 325 mm -hmm. because it was going way too hot. It was often going in the three, uh, the, the four, 450. So we dropped it to 325. Instead, we, we cooked it longer, smoother. Mm -hmm. And this way it won't overcook on the skin and not cook inside. The cookie skin. The cookie skin, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so we'll just let them rest before enjoying them with my nice cup of coffee. Coffee? Coffee. Coffee. With my nice cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> We also have our Nova precision cooker uh, heating up to 140.5 to start the uh, prosciutto wrapped chicken. You gotta start it early because because it's still frozen. I gotta add an, an extra hour, so I'm gonna cook it for three three and a half hours and finish it on the propane grill. Why not? Welcome to our fridge. Where is it, the chicken? It was frozen. Oh, <laughs> the phone is in my face. Oh, it's getting a... Uh... Thawed a little bit? Yeah. It's it, okay. It, uh, it thawed, it, it threw. Thawed. It th thawed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit less frozen than yesterday, <laughs> let's say. That's okay. It's gonna cook faster. Okay, like that. Selfie mode. Selfie mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
because it's it's a really uneven heat I'll try to focus here and then finish it on the edges because it's really really hot here but it's more uh, regular heat over here All right, the goal here is just to give it a nice little grow, a little grow mark. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna close the lid just to keep the heat a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna put it on direct heat. really here it's gonna go real fast so don't don't go away when you're doing this because this burns up very quickly don't want it to burn I just want the prosciutto to crisp up a little faster because all the rest is cooked all right check this out so it's super tender on the inside see how my just goes right through but you got the nice crispiness of the prosciutto it's like butter best of both worlds because otherwise it if you're only doing sous vide and not cooking it in a pan or just grilling it a little bit it's kind of like a little bit soggy so it's it's gonna be great but it's not gonna look as good you're not gonna have that car caramelized effect when you're, you're grilling it I prepared Asian style marinated tofu. I'm getting the trigger ready to smoke it. To smoke, first open the lid, then turn the knob to smoke, and turn on the trigger. We'll wait for it to build up a nice smoke cloud. My marinade is basically soy sauce, a clove of garlic, a little bit of brown sugar, some uh, gochujang, the Korean ketchup <laughs> kind of thing, olive oil, salt, pepper. I'll let the tofu slices smoke for about 10 to 15 minutes. Tofu should be ready. Then, all right, turn this off. So turn it completely the other side. Yeah. And let it run, cycle. let it run. Shut down yep. the cycle. Okay. I'm not turning it off yet. Nope. Wait. Oh, wait. Okay, these uh, little handy dandy. This little tool might not be the greatest, but it's been fun. <laughs> Sorry about the state of the grill now. We've been using it quite a lot. Yee, nice to. Who needs a knife? Oh, wait a second. I need an eye. Mmm. That's so good. Mmm. Can I have a taste? It's very crispy. On the bottom. Wow. Is that the total opposite of what tofu tastes like? Well, usually it's... Um, it's um, tender and there's no crust. Oh, it's yeah. But now there is. Hey, and my marinade tastes mm, yeah. good. Mm. good. That's interesting. So I think I, I can taste the smoky flavor. It's very nice. Cheers. Huh? Vegetarian version, meat lover's version, carnivore version. Carnivore version. Mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Pros and cons of the 200 NXT. Well, first it's propane fed, so it's really available. You can buy the old tanks, or you can buy, you can get an adapter to put a, a big uh, propane tank on it. It's also very versatile because you can change the cooking grates and convert it into a stove to put pots and pans on it. On the downside, is very uneven. So if you stick with the where the holes are, you're gonna get burned pretty pretty fast. 
So the usable space is really in the middle, uh, unless you want to have a quick char of your meat. Also, this is like an ironing board, uh, the way it's, it's uh, lifted. So you can get your, your fingers snapped in a mechanism. It happened a couple of times. It's a little bit a pain in the ass to raise up. You can put it on a table when it's folded up and it's going to be usable. Um, and also the build quality, the design is a little eh, eh, iffy. Uh, you see this shelf here? Well, the, the, the screws, even if you put Loctite, it keeps falling, falling off. And they're not, it's, anyways, it's a little iffy. This, this one is retractable, so you're all good. But this one, when you're rolling the whole device, uh, you need this to be stable to be able to roll it around. But anyways, I don't like how that shelf is made. Or overall, nice uh, big chubby uh, tires on the bottom. So it's, uh, it's the lightest of the two and it's the easiest to uh, um, to store stow away in a trailer or in the back of the car. Uh, just keep in mind though, if you put them back in the car, there's always that little uh, oil thingy on the bottom and remove it, otherwise it's gonna spill in your car. All right, the Traeger. This is more like a convention, convection oven. It's indirect heat versus the Coleman is more direct heat. So it's two different beasts. You wouldn't use that to boil water, but uh, if you wanna cook something and you want it to be juicy inside, this is a great choice. It's not gonna be as easy to do nice little grill marks unless you leave it on the grill for like uh, 30, 40 minutes. The experience of changing your wood pellets is really nice. You can really add a li nice little smoke taste depending on the type of woods you're using. I use the big game blend when I'm not sure what I'm gonna cook and I wanna have something versatile. This is a mix of Ickery red and white oak with rosemary herbs. I wish the, the tailgater would have a, a, a door that you could remove the pellets though. That's the downside of this model because it's so compact. They didn't put a door to remove this. So you gotta burn through all of it until you can change the type. So the cons, you need to have power. So, Unless you have a battery with a 400 watt uh, power converter AC to DC or DC to AC, um, you're not gonna go far. It's not gonna run. Uh, even though it's wood, uh, it's, it burns wood, it needs the fan and the, uh, the mechanism to put the uh, little pellets in. Mosquitoes. <laughs> Am I gonna get rid of my Coleman? No. If I want a, a quick cook, uh, I want to have something versatile, and I need to have a very uh, a lean, lean and mean kit, the Coleman is the way to go. Um, but when I'm inviting friends over and I'm doing a, uh, uh, I want to do some amazing food, then I'll carry the extra weight of the trigger and use this to complete it. Uh, if you have a, gr uh, a fire with a uh, little grate that you could put the pans and, uh, pans and pots on top of the, the fire, then you might, you might be able to leave the Coleman at home. Um, but if you're going to somewhere you don't know what the setup is and you have the space to carry both in a trailer, then yeah, I mean, in, in my case, we're probably gonna use both. I know it's a little intense, uh, but it's glamping after all, right? Well, I guess so. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk to you again in the next one. Bye.